We are currently looking at OB1 in the programming editor. Let's monitor the block. You can see that the CPU has gone to stop. Let's open the module information tool. To do this, select the PLC menu. Choose module information. Normally, we would go to the diagnostic buffer tab first, but since this demonstration revolves around the stacks tab, then let's click on the stacks tab. Using the blocks interrupt and local data stacks for troubleshooting is probably most valuable for code troubleshooting. Here are some important things to note. First, you can only view the stacks if the CPU is in stop mode. The default view is the block stack. What this shows is the calling order up to the fault interruption. This view shows that OB1 called FB18, FB18 called FC28, FC28 called FC57, and whatever fault occurred is in FC57. You can also see if any data blocks were open during the block calls. Now let's look at the interrupt stack. Click the iStack button. There's a lot of information in the iStack window. For instance, the controlling organization block from which the calling was started is OB1 with priority class 1. FC57 was the interrupted block. Data block 18 was open and is 46 bytes in size. The value that was in accumulator 1, shown in hex, was 4 E's in the lower byte. Accumulator 2 did not have a value in it at the time of the interruption. You can also view the accumulators in other display formats, such as decimal or floating point. Address register 1 did not have a value, and address register 2 contained data block 0.0. .0. You can also see the value of each of the bits of the status word. The purpose of this video is not to explain what each of these things mean. You can find information about these through other videos. You can also open the interrupted block, FC57, by clicking the Open Block button. Let's close the interrupt stack window. The interrupted block, FC57, can be opened from the Blocks window as well. Highlight FC57 and click the Open button. FC57 opens. There's only one line of code for this demonstration, so the problem either has to be that data block 1 is not loaded into the CPU, or else there's no word 40 in data block 1. A visit to the Diagnostic Buffer tab will tell you which it is. Now let's highlight OB1 on the Blocks tab. Select the Local Data or LStack button. This window shows the hexadecimal values in the local data stack of OB1. For instance, byte 0 of OB1 has the hex value 11 in it. Close the LStack window and close the Module Information tool. Let's pull down the Divider window in OB1. Here in the temp variables of the interface is the local data stack where the values you saw earlier were read from. We saw that byte 0 had a 1 1 in it, which means that there was an incoming event of event class 1. You can find more information about the local data stack of OB1 and the other OBs from the somatic help on OBs. In conclusion, if you have an error that involves block not downloaded or an address that's outside the range, the diagnostic buffer is sufficient for troubleshooting. If, however, you need to know what values are in the accumulators, address registers, and the status word, then the stacks tool would be very helpful. Remember that you have to be in stop mode to access the stacks tool. And that concludes this video.